Hey, algebra students, I wanted to look at this example with you guys for sure, because it is a wonderful one that teaches you some skills that come up on math science, and social studies. Nothing like prepping for multiple tests at the same time. So a marine biologist is comparing the biodiversity of tide pools. Some of the data she collected is summarized in the table. This is why we see this kind of a problem on all three tests, because this is data, this is information that's collected, and both sciences and social scientists collect data. And if that data is in the form of numbers, as much of this data is, then we can analyze it using math. And so we see it there as well. So first question we see about this table is what is the mean number of observed algae species per pool? So mean, also known as an arithmetic average or just an average, the only kind of average you're going to see on the GED. But mean is a data analysis concept, but as it turns out, it's on the formula sheet. When you look at the GED formula sheet, the first, oh, maybe half of it is geometry. But right below that in the middle is a data section. And in the data section, we see mean and median, the two most common data analysis concepts that probably come up on the GED test, and there they are. Now, you're going to notice, though, that they don't actually give you formulas for these. They give you some written directions, and that's okay. It's basically the same thing as a formula, except they're giving it to us in the language of English instead of the language of algebra, but it still gives us directions here. Now, I have good and bad news. I do not believe you're going to have this formula sheet if you have a mean or a median problem on the science or the social studies. This formula sheet is what you get while you're taking the math test. But that being said, just doing these examples with these directions a few times might be all you need so that you're prepared when it comes up on those other tests as well, because it's not that challenging. All that to say, we were looking for mean. And according to this sheet, the definition of mean is that it is equal to the total of the values of a data set. You might want to write this on your formula sheet to simplify it. it, is equal to the total of the values of a data set. So whatever the data is, if I'm looking at ages, it's the total of people's ages. If I'm looking at home prices, it's the total of all the home prices. Divided by, that's why I put that fraction bar, we're going to take that total, we're going to divide by the number of elements in the data set. So again, if I'm looking at ages, it would be the number of ages. Or if I was looking at mean home prices, it would be the number of homes. A lot of times I say number of numbers, uh, but I've seen students who, when it gets oversimplified like that, get tricked. So instead of saying number of numbers, I'm going to say number of items. Now, just in general, the GED subject tests love to give you information in tables. So I think really the only skill here with a table is knowing where to look. So let's look at our question one more time. It says, what is the mean number of observed algae species per pool? So we said here that we were going to do the total. Well, if we're looking for the mean number of observed algae species, that would be the total of the algae species. And if it's per pool, then that's going to be divided by the number of pools, right? It's the number of items in the data set. Well, my data set here is the algae species in those pools. So the first pool, the second pool, the third pool. So what information do I need from the table? Well, the table is a little tricky because nowhere does it say tide pools, but I do see here that I have some numbers. So it looks like since this table they say is comparing the biodiversity of tide pools, and we see these numbers here with some information going across, looks like these are the tide pools. We've got six of them and we have some information. Well, what do we want? to know we want to know about the algae species in those tide pools we don't care about where they're located what their diameter temperature or how many invertebrate or vertebrate species there are so first we're going to need to take the total of the algae species and then we're going to need to divide by those number of pools which in this case is six let's do that in our calculator so easiest way to probably total up these numbers is just to add them i mean i could multiply where there were repeats but it it's only six numbers. So I'll go ahead and I'll look and see that the total of the algae is 18 species, but those 18 species total are across six pools. So let's divide by those six pools. And then we see we have an average or mean of three 
algae species per pool. Awesome. So fair warning, there's a mistake a lot of students make. They'll just type in the addition two plus four plus two plus three plus four plus three divided by six. Take a look at what happens. You do not get three. You get a number that's way too high. And that's because you don't understand something about the order of operations. So I think the simplest way is to total it first. Notice how I press enter to find out that the total was 18 and then divide. But you could have also used a fraction bar because a fraction bar will group the total together and then divide. Whereas a divide by symbol, it just divides without grouping. Beautiful. So two lovely ways to do that in your calculator. And either way, we didn't have to know a lot about the mean when we had the formula sheet. Next example says, what was the median temperature of the pools? So median temperature. So again, we have the pools. This time we're looking at temp. And this time we want to find median. Let's go check out what the formula sheet has to say about that. According to this sheet, median is the middle value in an odd number of ordered values in the data set. So ordered values, they're telling you to put the numbers in order, put the data set in order. And then it says that the median is the middle number. Now you might say, but yeah, Kate, they said that's only when you have an odd number of ordered values. According to this, we're going to do something different when there's an even number of ordered values. And I say, this is not something to memorize. That's only because the middle changes. Let me show you what I mean. Oh, let's get an odd number of, I don't know, ages out. Let's say uh, that I have some students who are 17, 23, 24, 39, and 68. Sounds like a GED class. So these are the ages of my students. They're already in order. You can see these are in order. In this case, it's easy to find the middle. One off the front, one off the back, one off the front, one off the back. And look at that, the middle is easy to find because I have an odd number. I remove pairs from either side and I'm left with one in the middle. But throw one more student into this mix and suddenly the middle becomes a lot more challenging to pinpoint. One off the front, one off the back, one off the front, one off the back, and I have two in the middle. So that's what they mean. But they'll tell you what to do when there's two in the middle. So look at what it says. It says, or it's the mean of the two middle values in an even number of ordered values in a data set. Basically, what they're saying is if there's two in the middle, take the mean of those two numbers. I often call that a mini mean. You're going to take the two middle numbers, total them by adding them together, and take the mean of just those two, divide them by two. Okay, it's a little mini mean problem when you're looking for the median when there's two numbers in the middle. So if we're looking for the median temperature of the pools, we got to take those temperatures. And the first thing we got to do is we got to order that list. Let's put them in order. Okay, so smallest value I see is 20. And then after that, we've got a 21, 22, and then a 23. And then I have two 25s. And a lot of students think, oh, I won't repeat. You do need to repeat. If there's a bunch of 25s, you're going to write down a bunch of 25s. So there's my numbers, and you can see what happens here. If I take off one from the front and one from the back, one from the front and one from the back, I do have an even number of data items this time, so I do have two numbers left in the middle. So what did we say we would do when there were two in the middle? We said we would do a mini mean. We will add these two together and divide by two to find the perfect middle of this list, the perfect middle. What is perfectly between 22 and 23? Make a prediction, guys. What do you think is halfway between? 22 and 23. Let's take a look and see. So I think I'll bust out the fraction bar. 22 plus 23 and divide that by two. And oh, that didn't look the way I wanted. Oh, good thing I did this. Let's hit the quick convert key. There we go. 22.5. That makes sense. 22.5 is halfway between 22 and 23. Nice job, you guys. That is the median temperature of the pools. Strong work. So mean, median, super popular GED test topics, but on the formula sheet. Happy learning, you guys.